We're going to simulate death and immigration in a population of M&Ms. We'll need a normal size bag of M&Ms as a source of our population, a paper plate to catch the M&Ms at each step in the simulation, and two small paper cups to hold the current population and to hold the excess population. You should remove all yellow M&Ms as the M printed on the individual pieces do not appear well and the M will be used to determine the death for each M&M in our simulation after we toss them on the plate. We'll also need a recording sheet with four columns using headings generation, which indicates start of generation 0, 1, 2, etc. We're going to do about 12. Then we have a column called population before death, which is the initial population in each generation. Then we have a column that is the population after death, and a column which is the population after we immigrate. M&Ms. Notice the population cup has 12 M&Ms in it, while the excess cup has our extra M&Ms we'll use as needed for emigration. We toss these M&Ms onto a plate, and uh, seven of them uh, had the M facing up, and these died. Since seven died, we're left with five after death, whereupon we immigrate nine to get a population after immigration of 14 M&Ms. We'll keep the immigration the same for each generation, in our case, nine. You may want to change this, but be consistent throughout your simulation. Notice that on our recording sheet, the number after death and immigration at each generation is the same as the starting population at the next generation. We show that for another generation in which eight of the 14 M&Ms died, leaving six in the population after death. When we then immigrated nine to get back up to 15 in the population, and that 15 is the start of generation one. Okay, let's get started on our simulation. Um, what we've done is we've counted out uh, five M&Ms and we will roll them onto the plate and we will determine who lives and who dies. So here we go. What we see is that there are four M&Ms that have died. This leaves us with a population after death of one. We will then immigrate nine. Let's do that. So here's our one plus four plus five. So after immigration, we are back up to 10. Let's collect those in our population cup. And that population is the start of generation one. So here we go. We'll simulate the next generation. And what we see is there's one, two, three, four, five, Six of the ten have died. That leaves us with a population of four. And to that population of four, we're going to immigrate six. So I'll need three more out of this cup. And that says um, we now are up to 13 after this generation. And that is the start of the next generation. We're going to be quiet for a while while we conduct all these simulations, and we hope to see you uh, and talk with you after we get to Generation 12. So here we go.
So there you have it. Uh, what we've done is uh, produce 12 generations of a death and immigration uh, simulation with M&Ms. Now we seek to model this phenomena by identifying the variables, perhaps plotting the data, creating a mathematical description of this iterative process, and determining parameters for our data. Finally, we'll compare our model with the data, make some observations, and draw some conclusions. Incidentally, you could have built a mathematical model of what we think will happen before collecting the data, making appropriate assumptions about the physical issues involved. Indeed, it's probably wise to ask yourself before beginning the simulation to describe what you think will happen as we proceed generation after generation. We hope you've enjoyed this simulation, and unless otherwise instructed, you can make your own decisions about the M&M's existence on your plate. Thank you.